Hello there, welcome back. I'm doing a quick video today about a book called The Body by Bill Bryson. Uh, I read this recently, I finished it a few days ago. I actually read this book in paperback form, which is quite rare for me these days. I usually read books on my Kindle, but I thought I'd treat myself to the paperback copy. And uh, I really liked it. I haven't got the actual book here to show you because I tend not to hold on to physical books these days. I, I don't have my own library or anything like that. I've actually already taken the book back to the second-hand bookstore and I sold it for about one pound. But I did very much enjoy the book. Uh, this one was published in 2019, so it's fairly new, only about three years old. And as the title suggests, it's all about the human body. And it literally covers every aspect of the human body. There are chapters on the skin, the hair, going all the way through to the brain. And I think there's like a separate chapter for each one of the internal organs. Or some chapters might discuss two of them at the same time. But every single aspect of the body is covered in detail. And the main strength of this book is, is Bill Bryson's amazing ability to discuss highly complex topics in such a simple, easy to read way. You, this book is actually skimmable. You, you, can, you can just glide through the book with ease even though it covers, you know, arguably one of the most complex topics there is, the internal workings of the human body, but it's so easy to read. Um, I won't go through every chapter here, I'm just going to speak about the highlights. The main things that, that have uh, kind of stuck with me after reading this book, one of them is um, vitamin C. Now, most of us, if, if we have the cold, uh, a cold or flu, we immediately think, right, I need some vitamin C. Vitamin C gets rid of colds. But apparently that is a complete myth. And the reason everybody believes this is because of a man called Dr. Paulson from the USA. He, I think he died about 10 years ago. But he... he believe that vitamin C cured all kinds of diseases and every single day he, he took so much vitamin C he might have even injected himself with it he took like 10 times the recommended dose and, and he used to swear by the fact that it cured colds and flu but recent studies have, have proven that it was complete nonsense it, vitamin C does nothing for colds and flu so that's quite interesting. I also read about this terrifying disease in the book called fatal familial insomnia. And it's an extreme form of insomnia where you, it, you just literally cannot sleep. You get zero sleep, not even one hour a night, not even one minute. And eventually, the people who have got this disease, that they eventually die of... Um, organ failure because you can only go so long without sleep so after a while that they just become confined to a hospital bed and one by one their organs fail and even as that is happening they still can't sleep at all terrifying however it's not as terrifying as the two following points that I'm going to discuss there are two things in particular that terrified me in this book. Number one, um, having bladder stones in, what, what, what century was it? Um, it might have even been the 19th century, not even that long ago. Having bladder stones back in the day was, was no fun at all as this picture displays. If you had bladder stones back then, you were held down 
by about three or four men whilst awake of course and a doctor would insert a long instrument into your penis all the way into your bladder to hold the bladder stone in place and then the surgeon would cut you open in, in the area between the scrotum and the anus to expose the bladder and then the surgeon would cut open the bladder and then pull out the bladder stone with a pair of metal forceps. Now, I don't know about you, but I would actually prefer to just keep the bladder stone rather than go through the trauma of that horrific operation. That, I mean, that is just the stuff of nightmares. And apparently most people who, who had that operation were, were traumatised for life, unsurprisingly. Um, and if that's not bad enough, this book uh, discusses the history of lobotomies. In case you don't know, a lobotomy is, is an operation where part of the brain gets removed or certain sections of the brain get severed and taken apart from each other. Now, there's a man called Walter Jackson Freeman who, who operated in the 1940s and 50s. He didn't invent the lobotomy, but he, he kind of developed it from somebody else. And he travelled around America in the 40s and 50s performing lobotomies on certain... Um, patients in mental homes and stuff but in, he didn't he didn't operate them he didn't operate on them by drilling open their heads and accessing the brain that way while they were still conscious I think he had them lying on the bed and then he used a metal ice pick not even a proper medical instrument it was a metal ice pick and he put the ice pick above the eyeball about here and then using a hammer he tapped the ice pick into the brain and then he wiggled the ice pick left and right to sever certain connections and then he used to just pull the ice pick out it was barbaric and he got away with this for years and years he travelled around America in the 40s and 50s and he actually performed one of these lobotomies on John F. Kennedy's sister, who was never the same afterwards. Oh, it is literally the stuff of nightmares. I mean, I, I, imagine it. Just imagine having an ice pick whacked into your eye or above your eye, into your brain. Uh, dark days dark days indeed. But um, going back to the book itself, it, it is a very good book and I highly recommend it. Um, I did get a little bit bored in certain chapters. I got a little bit bored and towards the end especially, in my opinion that there are too many uh, statistics and percentages. He talks about the, the percentage of people who get this disease across the world the percentage of people who do this and that. I don't like reading too much about percentages, so that got a bit boring for me. And one other thing that slightly annoyed me, it, this is not exclusive to this book, but um, sometimes you get a big book like this one, and it is quite a big book, by the way, it's about 450 pages. And there, there are pictures in the book, but instead of having all the pictures spread out evenly across the book, the pictures are in two sections in the book, in big clumps. I think I understand why they do this. It's because it makes the publishing process a lot easier. But it, it's a little criticism of mine. It, it'd be much better, wouldn't it, if all of the pictures were, were evenly spread out. Or, or the pictures coincided with each chapter. That would be much better, but the pictures are all in clumps altogether. Uh, but I highly recommend it if you're if you're interested in reading like an accessible book all about the human body, you can't really do better than this one. It's a good read, so uh, give it a go. Thanks for watching. If you feel like checking out some of my own books, uh, I've left a link below. I've got some books on Amazon. 
Uh, I'll see you again in about two weeks with another video. Until then, try to have a great day on this bizarre, medical, biological, curious rock we call Earth. Goodbye.